Hello guys, I'm Andrey Vinokurtsev. Thank you for joining me today to the presentation. Uh, it since was long time since my last presentation, but I've decided to make some history of video codecs. Uh, I think for last 20 years I've been in most of the codec development and coders and decoder and I can make some uh, history of how they've been developed and why they've been developed. It's probably a lot of questions why there are so many and we're going to make some clearness of this and maybe see what was at the beginning and what was and, and what is actually developed right now and maybe we'll see the reasoning behind all of this mess that come from the different codec perspective. Uh, so so let's start from the beginning why we actually need the video codec as the first place and uh, I took it from my previous slides of old presentations then uh, uh, the easy answer is the original data that is come from uncompressed video data is very large now if you want to send it through the small video channel like whatever channel on the internet because the internet channel is very small by comparing to uncompressed video data we need to compress it uh, by compressing it we need to decompress it at some point so if you're going to look on this picture suppose we have a, a really big chunk of data then we want to squeeze in and we want to see anything else at the, at the opposite side we need to apply decoder and recompress it uh, the funny things by, by seeing on these funny pictures you still would not receive the same amount of data you started to compress so to get at the beginning of the conversation what we're trying to achieve we're trying to squeeze the data but we're still trying to squeeze the data with losing as much as possible data so we will receive the almost identical picture but not exactly identical so, so it's exactly as it's shown on this picture hope it is clear anyway you can see my previous presentations and understand why it is so by what techniques is applied to get this uh, now let's see on the timeline it's a quite large timeline the video codec have a really huge history if we go back to the 1990s we still can see the 261 which has been developed to to get video codec compressed rate and after this in 93 MPEG-1 took over of it was two different standards like ISO standards and IT, ITU standards and they start to compete each other where the ITU standards start to be developing H.262 which is part of MPEG-2 transport stream which is right now it's br still broadcasted MPEG-2 uh, it was quite good achievement because MPEG-2 was very good achievement on this time if you just skip H.263 because it was quite small transition between mobile data because 2000 it was already mobile data developed and H.263 was pretty uh, preliminary dedicated to mobile data through the mobile channel and H.264 was on top of it it was in introduced some good compression rate for the some sort of for playback files and mobile and it was include H.262 and H.26 and MPEG-4 part 2 standard which you can uh, you can see it's mostly the same line of names but they, they, they every 261, 262, 263, 264 and the next one is in 2013, 265 it is improvement for the previous standards and we will see in the next couple of slides what, what is actually improving but the company which is behind this, it's ISO and ITU, they are improved it somehow. On the opposite side, we see that Google, for example, compete with H.264 or H2, H.2 standards, developing the VP8, VP9, VP10, and now it's AV1. If we add a bit more, for example, if you going to look on H.263 standard it's not a clear full picture it was much more hundreds of different codecs around in this timeline for example for H.263 at the time of 2000 between 2000 to 220 
it was H263, H263+, H263++, and even Sorenson. I was in development of all of this, and they've not was not really bad. It was quite good for the mobile uh, industry, for CCTV industry. For uh, I don't think it it used in broadcast, but it is used. Is as far as as I remember, it was used in mobile a lot, a lot. It's much. It was much lighter, and it was much useful for the mobile. For example, Nokia's phone Symbian, if you remember, for example. But of course, H264 took over of H263. If you're going to look on MPEG2 or MPEG4 standard, MPEG4 standard, just in addition of MPEG4 standard part 10 is H264. Not sure if it's making you some logic, but MPEG4 part 10 is H264 AVC standard, but MPEG4 part 2 it is original MPEG4 standard. So it, it it's it is quite large standard, quite good standard. So the many companies try to achieve the usefulness of this, and we seen Xvid. Probably you remember Xvid and DVX. It was decoders. It was with slaves of this. It was used around the world for many many years. It was quite useful codec. Uh, for the H two six four, we can see a lot of improvement. Different. It, it's still going on on the market. So H.264, even if it's been developed into first draft was released in 2003, it's still going on, but it's H.264+, plus, 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 X.264, it's whatever you can call, it's a lot of different subsets that you can use for this H.264 encoder. For the ON2, for example, uh, which took over by Google, uh, they not started from VP8, you can imagine it was VP3, VP4, VP5, VP6 and then at some point Google took over onto company and started to produce their own codec which is called VP8, VP9, VP10 and at the same time they've been competing between H.265 codec. And we can, we can, we, we can just call X265 and X264 as a standard. It, it's a bit of subset of useful features that is well known, in, well known re, right now on the market because if you take FFmpeg for example framework you you definitely going to use X265 or X264 and pay them license for example. And the new one is AV1, of course, and VVC, which is 2020. Today we're on 2021. Then you're probably going to choose one of them, AV1 and or VVC. It is a bit different slice of the same timeline, but by companies. Uh, for example, H2 is ITU standards, and which is compete with ISO, but if you're paying the lies, it, it's mostly who you actually pay for because on the codec, you can just say, oh, well, what is a codec? Codec is a product of someone. You can just take and use it without paying. If you take it, you should pay for the license to someone, which is at this graph, you can see, for example, VC1 was missing on the previous graph. It is part of SMPTE, which is part of Microsoft. And it wasn't a really successful codec, but it was very uh, interesting codec at this time. And of course, you have to pay to SMPTE, to Microsoft licensing. The same with ISO. If you take H.264 and start using it, or H.265, you have to pay license to someone. Here it's quite of misleading because should they pay to ITU or should they pay to ISO? Possibly to both of them. That's why it's more confusing. That's why it's not so easy. And if you look on the bottom line, on to or Google, you, you probably don't need to pay anyone because it's a free codec, but it comes as an opposite line of what you what the what tools you have to use with this product or what application you have to use with this codec. Uh, so this is a bit of picture of and it's the missing here is H266, which is VVC and AV1, but you can see that. If you took on ISO, it is next codec VVC, and if you took on Google, is AV1 is the next part. So why why is so many? What are they trying to achieve? They're trying to achieve the, the 
as, as you remember from the first slide, they try to squeeze the data and send it through the channel. So the first idea is to use as less possible bitrate to actually squeeze it more and more and more. With of course uh, losing as much, losing as little information, but it is impossible. You have to uh, actually uh, simplify your calculation. You have to say, okay, I'm going to lose these pixels, but I'm going to save bit, uh, bit rate. So if we see on the timeline, for example, going from MPEG 2 to, to, to H265, the big leap between MPEG 2 and H.264 was 50% bitrate reduction. And it is actually 50% bitrate reduction because we, if you remember back, we was watching DVD, which is, was five gigabyte of data or 10 gigabyte of data movie, which we could see on H.264 some small USB D, small USB for five megabit per second. And we can see the same movie. We couldn't see any big difference. For the H.265 is again, is the gain of the moving from H.264 to H.265 is 50% more bitrate reduction. It's come as the opposite cost. You can't just save the bit. You need to make more multiplication, more mass calculation. So it's come on the idea of you squeezing more, but you use more mass in your brain. Then you need to much, much better hardware to do this. So it's not just, okay, I can switch over to H.265, for example, and enjoy the bitrate reduction. Yes, you can, but you need much better hardware. Maybe this graph uh, will give a bit more information. For example, moving from H.264, uh, it's not H.264 here, but it is comparison between VVC, AV1, HEVC, HEVC, it is H.265 codec it's real names so the av1 and avvc is the new one that probably going to release this year next year it's in very high level of development then we see that the bitrate on vvc is even faster reduction 35 percent by comparing to av1 so which one you're going to choose i don't know but this is clear improvement in faster bitrate reduction And now it may be like, why so many players? For example, it's still, for example, today, Tor and Dala still in development. They're trying to release some new codex, for example. It's meant to be royalty free. VP9 or VP10, which is, uh, it should be part of AV1, but it's not, it's in development. And AV1 is meant to be released soonish, but it's still not and H.265, H.264, it isn't free, then it's don't, don't think you just take the product from the market on the shelf, for example, FFmpeg H.265 already done, uh, and you can utilize it, yes, you can utilize it for personal use, but if you're going to sell it, you, you should pay the license, and it's quite, quite expensive might be, and if you can see here, it's very confusing as well, if, even if you want to pay license, to whom you should pay, because it's, because it is a product, it's not one member of the f ma one member who actually holds a patent for this product. It's many different patent pools that hold this product. Then you you can pay to MPEG LA, for example, if you take H.264, but should you pay to VIA license? Probably not, but you can pay still, t you should still pay to MPEG LA, for example. But if you take H HEVC, which is H.265, in it's more trouble because HEVC is an alliance of three different members pool and to whom to pay to actually be like in the better position or be in the safe position I'm not sure this is a very confusing word and for example VP9 and AV1 they've actually part of CISWELL as well so that's why maybe AV1 and VP9 is not come out so easily as well but from this picture, it's it's not as easy as as simple just to pay someone and be safe. Now, what what actually how you can choose which codec is the best? For example, for you, if you choose a codec, uh, it's a simple solution. You can develop yourself codec. 
you don't have to take anyone and to pay anyone else. If you have on one side uncompressed data, you, you compress the data on opposite side, you have your decoder, it just understands this uncompressed data and, and decode it. In the better position, you know what you want to achieve. So you don't need any code, you don't need to pay anyone, you just develop all these things. But by taking someone else codec, you can cut by development cycle. If you, you take, for example, you, you need to take, for example, only encoder, you encode the file, you encode the uncompressed data, you have the file, and then you can, because you took the standard codec, someone else, and you don't care how they achieve this, they take the standard decoder and it should understand your file. This, this is a bit it, it, and the same if you have already encoded data and it is standard H.264, you can use a player that understands H.264, you can play it, but you don't have to buy any one codec, you can develop yourself and call any codec by yourself name. Now this is just general idea why we need encoder and why we need decoder. So, but now it is a bit more interesting picture, like which codec to choose. For example, H.264 today, it's mostly supported on the hardware pro platform because it's built in in the hardware support and any browser in the world, mostly or all of the browsers in the world, same for the Cisco, for example, they've made this royalty free, uh, can support H.264. It's mostly supported in Android and Apple we not left Microsoft, so we're not bothered by Microsoft and Blackberry and Symbian and, and it's just two on the market at the moment. And the uh, coding performance is quite good, like you, you can get good quality with good bitrate and royalty, but the royalty is not free, I, as, as I've told you in the beginning, you have to pay to H.264 if you want to use it. With H.264.5 it's more confusing picture. It is some hardware support available right now because if you remember back, the picture is released in 2013. It's almost 10 years in the market and it is hardware support. The browser support isn't so clear. It is like, uh, it's not supported by native support by Chrome still, not by Firefox. So if you make yourself H.265, you might not be able to see anything. You might be able, you might need to re-encode re your video. So the Apple complaining, uh, saying that the are support, have support in mobile platforms, it's probably yes, uh, but it's not Android. Here is come downline, you need very high performance uh, CPU to make H.265 working on your PC or on your mobile or whatever, because this is coming as a downline and it is not free. VP9, it's relatively the same picture with H.265, it isn't better, but it is supported on Android because it's a Google and it's still in it very high, high quality hardware to do it and it is claimed to be free. AV1, which is AV1 and, A and VVC is not, is not in in this picture, but AV1 and VVC is two new codecs, then both in development, hardware still both in development, the main to be, for example, for AV1 browser support have to be all in, this is was the idea of, you can take AV1 and it will be supported in any platform, but the coding performance is a downline, it's very high, it's much higher than H.264, it's much much higher than H.265, so unless we don't have good CPU or good hardware, we probably wouldn't see AV1 in a in, in couple of years time still, but it is free. Uh, so the, all, the, all the picture might look like confusing, but there is reasoning behind, behind why the codex is not like stable, like with H.264 and everyone use H.264. It, competing in the market, many players, they want to achieve money. So it's probably end of this conversation. And if you want to ask any question, you always can ping me on my, uh, where is it? on the YouTube and I'm going to answer the questions. Thank you very much for listening. 